Hey friends, this is Michael Bohm with Youth Apologetics Training. Today we're going to keep going with this series about Islam and the Quran. Today we're going to be talking about the Quran and some of the issues, some of the internal inconsistencies or, or contradictions that are found in the Quran. And so anyway, with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. We have historic contradictions in the Quran. For example, there is uh, in Surah 12, verse 20, we find out that Joseph was sold for a miserable price for a few dur durhams, or dirhams, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, counted out in such low estimation did they hold him. Guys, this currency, these dirhams, never existed during the time of Muhammad. Or, I'm sorry, these dirhams, which did exist during the time of Muhammad, never existed during the time of Joseph. They were long far off in the future. This is a major historical goof. And there's no way around this. And just as a side note, there are tons of these historical goofs in the Quran. Because uh, in ancient Arabian culture, time was not viewed as uh, linear, like we see time. They saw it in a cyclical manner. So their historical events were really jumbled. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to explain, but you got to see this. They, they just, the Muhammad continually messed up historical events, having different characters in the Bible who lived, you know, a thousand or at least hundreds of years apart, but they're living together in the same household, part of the same family, just strange stuff. So yeah, moving on here. Uh, here's a big one. Surah chapter 4 verse 157. And I've mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again in this context. They claim that Jesus was never crucified. And guys, if there's one thing we know, I mean, I mean we know a lot of things, but if there's one thing we know about the time of Jesus, uh, even secular scholars, I mean, very atheistic scholars will all admit it is a matter of absolute factual history. A man, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, I should say, Christ is not his last name, contrary to what many people believe, Jesus of Nazareth was crucified. Whether he rose from the dead or not, well, I absolutely 100% know for a fact he did. But let's just, from a historical secular standpoint, whether he rose from the dead is another question entirely. But it is a historical fact, undeniable historical, you got to be silly fact, that Jesus died on a cross. He was crucified. The Christians saw it happen. The Jews who, many of which hated the Christians, saw it happen, and they wrote about it. The Romans, who didn't much like the Jews or the Christians, <laughs> who were very against the God of the Bible, uh, also saw it happen and wrote about it. We have, I mean, good grief, guys. We've got so many uh, different writings about Jesus being crucified. And then, consequently kind of off the subject, but on the subject, we have all these believers who saw him crucified and then saw him alive again with the crucifixion wounds in a glorified, powerful God state, falling on their knees and saying, my Lord and my God. We have these believers who saw him alive with these wounds and they devoted their lives to him in such a way that they were willing to face horrible, horrible, painful martyr, martyrdom deaths. And this is not the Islamic equivocation of martyrdom. This is not they went and killed themselves for the sake of killing a bunch of defenseless people, women and children in crowded restaurants. No, they died horrible deaths at the hands of persecutors rather than just simply renounce it and say, okay, I was mistaken. It could have been anybody. Maybe it was Judas with those holes in his hands. I'm sorry. I goofed up. Let me go. And they would have let him go. All they had to do was say, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't see that. I, I don't know. what I was, Something came over me. I'm sorry. And then just renounce what they thought they saw and walk off. 
with nothing more than maybe a couple black eyes. No big deal. But rather, they were skinned alive. They had their throat slit. They had themselves dipped in wax and then skewered on a pole. I'm not going to go into detail on that, but they were a human skewer. And while they were writhing in pain on the pole, they were lit on fire so that Nero could ride his chariot through his garden and watch the Christians scream and burn and writhe in pain. All right. They were sawn in half. They were crucified upside down. They were stoned to death. They were thrown off of temples. They were boiled in hot oil. And this all comes down to they did this because they saw what they saw and, and nothing more. All they had to do is say, I'm sorry, I was tripping, I repent, I'm not a Christian. It's that easy. Okay, I didn't see him rise from the grave. It was that easy. Anyway, it's a matter of history. Jesus was crucified. To say otherwise, you have to put your fingers in your ears, shut your eyes, and go la, 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 because there is no way to deny it. It's silliness to say that he was not crucified. That's what the Quran says. He was not crucified. So moving on. No, no, let's not move on. I can't get off this subject. Guys, the fact that Jesus was crucified... This was so historically factual, it changed the entire world. Nothing has changed the world more than the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nothing. The whole world over has been changed from this one event again. How in the world can you deny this? It would be easier to deny the Holocaust. No, maybe not. Anyway, it's not much different. You have to completely just tune out everything and say, no, I believe that the Quran is true, and it has to be true because Muhammad wrote it, and God, God, Allah, gave it to Muhammad, and if Muhammad said it, it has to be true, therefore it's true. Circular reasoning. And that's where they're stuck. There's a lot of circular reasoning type arguments, tautologies, where they argue themselves in the circles because there, there is no other way to argue for it, but rather just to say, well, it came from God, so it has to be true. Well, how do you know it's true? It came from God. Well, how do you know God wrote it? Because it's true. Wait, what? Okay, let's move on. We have instances in the Quran where Mary, the mother of Jesus, is confused with Miriam, the sister of Aaron and Moses the daughters of Amram. Okay, this is only 1,400 years difference in time. And the Quran has Mary, the mother of Jesus, being confused with the Miriam, who is the sister of Aaron and Moses. That, my friends, is a big goof. That's a very big goof. Um, Surah 19, verse 27 and 28, it says, At length, she brought the babe to her people, carrying, her in, in, carrying him in her arms. They said, Oh, Mary, truly a strange thing has thou brought. O oh, sister of Aaron, thy father was not a man of evil, nor your mother a woman unchaste. And again, uh, just in case you didn't think that was conclusive enough, another verse referring to Mary, the mother of Jesus, Surah 66, verse 12 and Mary, the daughter of Imran. Again, we're talking about Mary, Jesus' mom, being confused with the sister of Aaron, slash sister of Moses, slash daughter of Imran. It's the same person. Huh. And looking at some internal contradictions that you find in the Quran. Here's, again, there are so many of them. I just picked some. All right. The Quran says that that on multiple different occasions it refers to the first Muslim. But here's the thing. It says there are many different first Muslims. Okay. So who was the first Muslim? Muhammad is called the first Muslim in Surah 614 uh, and also verse 163. Moses is referred to as the first Muslim in Surah 7 verse 143. Um, Abraham is referred to as the first Muslim in Surah 2, 127 through 133, and also Surah 3, verse 67. 
and Adam was the first Muslim in Surah 2, verse 37. I, okay, so again, big contradictions. Um, here's another one. What will be the food in hell? There's, <laughs> there's all these different verses that talk about this is the only food in hell, but they're all different. So in Surah 88, verse 6, we have the first food, or I mean the only food, being referred to as dari. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but that's the only food in hell. Then we have in Surah 69, verse 36, we have, this is gross, uh, only foul pus from the washing of wounds. Okay, that's nasty. And then in Surah 37, verse 66, uh, the only food is they will get to eat from the tree of Zakum. I don't know what that is either. All right, again, contradictions. Very obvious, blatant contradictions. All right, so check this out. In Surah verse 2, uh, I'm sorry, Surah 2, verse 221, it says that, that uh, any believer of Allah, so all the believers, Islamic believers, are forbidden from marrying idolatrous women. All right, you follow me so far? And Surah 9, verse 28 through 33, Christians and unbelievers are referred to as idolaters. All right, follow me so far? I think you know where I'm going with this. But God allows Muslims to marry Christian women in Surah 5, verse 5. All right, that is a huge contradiction. So they're not allowed to, to marry idolatrous women, and Christian women are idolaters, according to Islam, according to the Quran. But then in Surah 5, verse 5, they're allowed to marry Christian women. It kind of makes you think of, I got a big head and little arms. I, I just don't think I thought this through. Master? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I just don't think he thought this through. In Surah verse 9, and nine Surah 9 verse 17 and Surah 9 verse 69, um, the Quran says that Allah will not reward the good deeds of unbelievers, okay? So people like us Christians or Jews or anybody else who doesn't believe in, in Islam, those surahs say that Allah will not reward us for our good deeds, okay? With me so far? But in Surah 99, verse 7, it's implied that, yes, we will get rewarded for good deeds, in Surah 2, verse 62, the Quran promises Christians, that's us, a reward for our good deeds. But in Surah 9, verse 28 through 33, 5, verse 17, also 5, 72 through 73, it calls Christians idolaters. We already mentioned that just a moment ago. And in Surah 9, verse 17, it's painfully, obviously clear that idolaters will have no reward. Again, these are huge contradictions. You, you can't get around them. They're plain as day when you read them. And here we have, I mean, very obviously contradictions internally. Here's another one. Should Muslims show kindness to their parents? This is crazy. So in Surah 17, 23 through 24, Surah 31, 14 through 15, and Surah 29, verse 8, and there's others, the command or Quran commands uh, Muslims to show kindness to their parents, even if they're disbelievers, even if they do not believe in Islam. So they are to show kindness to their parents. But then in Surahs 9, 23, and 58.22, you find out that uh, they are absolutely 100% not to show any love or friendship to those who oppose Muhammad, and even if they are your parents. You can't have it both ways. You just can't. Again, that's a big contradiction. So that's pretty much a good place to stop, guys. Like I said... There, there are whole websites devoted to these contradictions, and they go on and on and on. There are so many problems in the Quran. 
I don't want to make a big deal of it right now because the series would just keep going forever. Maybe someday I'll do an entire series on just the contradictions in the Quran, but not today. <laughs> so tomorrow we're going to start looking at some various tips when trying to witness to Muslims uh, because that's what this is all about. You know, I, I'm not doing these series so that you guys can just learn some stuff, although that, that's kind of fun. But um, I really want to talk about how we can get in there and try to talk to these people and get them saved, get them to the cross. And so uh, join us tomorrow. And with that, come out to the website, youthapologeticstraining.com. And there you can leave comments and questions. I want to talk to you guys. Also, you can catch me on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. And with that, I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.